Chapter 9, Introduction to Hypothesis Testing. In this video, we'll be covering hypothesis tests for a proportion. So the hypotheses are stated in terms of a population parameter, which is our lowercase p, which means the population proportion. Our sample statistic that we're going to use to understand the population is our p bar, or the sample proportion. Note that the null hypotheses must have the equality symbol, where it's equals, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, just like it was in the hypothesis test for a mean. Similarly, you also have a significance level, or an alpha, that will determine the rejection region. So fortunately, the concepts behind the hypothesis test are the same in both the mean or proportion. But the process is a little bit different because we're working with different kinds of data. So here's some examples of our null and alternative hypotheses. Here we have our population proportion is equal to 0 0.30. That's our null hypothesis. That's another way of saying 30% of the population is something. The alternative hypothesis states that the population proportion is not equal to 0 0.30. In other words, what we have is a two-tailed test. Whenever you see equals not equals, you know it's going to be a two-tailed test because if our sample proportion is much larger or much smaller than our population proportion, we will reject the null. In this example here, our null hypothesis states that the population proportion is less than or equal to 0 0.3. And the alternative states that the population proportion is greater than 0 0.3. In other words, because of our greater than symbol in the alternative hypothesis, it points to the right. We're going to be working with a one-tailed upper tail test. So if that's helpful to remember, just look at the alternative hypothesis. Whatever that symbol states, that's the direction you want to go. For our next hypothesis statements, we have our population proportion is greater or equal to 0 0.3. And the alternative hypothesis is that our population proportion is less than 0 0.3. This is a one tail lower tail test. Again, I look at my alternative hypothesis. It's a less than statement. So less than points to the left towards the lower tail test. So just remember, LLL, less, lower, left. That's how I remember it. So when do we use a hypothesis test for a proportion? Proportions involve categorical values. Think categories or words, where we have two possible outcomes, a success, which simply means it has the characteristic of interest, or failure, it does not have that characteristic. So for instance, if we think about our Airbnb data, I can do a hypothesis test for the proportion of listings that are apartments. So the characteristic I'm interested in is whether or not it's an apartment. Other examples include customers that like or don't like a product, or items that are manufactured, whether or not they're defective or non-defective. So if this sounds familiar, this is a binomial process because there's two possible outcomes. Let's look at an example. Say Amazon claims that the proportion of dissatisfied customers is less than 10%, or 0 0.10. To test this, a random sample of n equals 100 customers is selected, and it turns out six of them report being dissatisfied. Using a 0 0.05 significance level, which is also known as our alpha, conduct the hypothesis test using the z-test statistic critical value approach. So our null and alternative hypotheses are going to be based on the Amazon's claim. So we're thinking about the proportion of dissatisfied customers is our population proportion. And because our statement here says less than 0 0.10, there's no equals in it, that means this is going to be our alternative hypothesis. So we'll write it as our null hypothesis is the population proportion is greater or equal to 0 0.10, and the alternative hypothesis for our population proportion is less than 0 0.10. So our alternative right here, this is the claim Amazon makes. It thinks that less than 10% of its customers are dissatisfied. Note we have to write everything in decimal format though in order to go through this process. Next we want to identify our alpha level. So that's the 0 0.05 significance level. And so that'll be where our cutoff point is for our rejection region. We also need to find our sample proportion, or our p-bar. So we have to look at our sample data. We have a sample size of 100, 
and of the 100, 6 were dissatisfied. So to get the sample proportion, we'll take 6 divided by 100 to get 0 0.06. A common error that folks will make is they will just use the whole number 6 as the proportion. That's not a proportion. A proportion must be in decimal format. 6 is simply a whole number. When you say that to someone, we don't know is that 6 out of a million, 6 out of a thousand, 6 out of 10? All have very different proportions. You have to divide x over n. Over here we also have our standard error, which is part of our formula when we are converting our sample proportions into a z-value. Just bringing everything over, let's go ahead and start solving. So based on our alpha level of 0.05, our cutoff value, or our critical value, or for z, is negative 1.645. And you can get that using the Appendix F or Excel. So recall in my Excel, I have a snapshot of Appendix F, and it has the z values in it. So since we are working with a lower tail test, so a one tail test, and the alpha is 0.05, we go down to our infinity row, because that's where our z values are, we have 1.6449. But recall that when it's a lower tail test, it's going to be a negative critical value. And you can also use Excel to find the same thing. The lower tail test here on the left is equals norm dot s dot inv parentheses, and our alpha was 0.05. Closing out, hit enter, we get negative 1.6449. So Excel will help identify the positive and negative, but note that with the Appendix F, you have to know to add the negative in there when we're in a lower tail test. So that's how we get our negative 1.645 for our critical value. Now, how do we get our test statistic though? We're gonna have to plug in our sample proportion, our hypothesized value of the population proportion, and our standard error, which is based off of the population proportion as well. So plugging in all our numbers, there's my 0 0.06, my hypothesized 0 0.10, and I'm also going to put in my 0 0.10 in here, and 1 minus 0 0.10 gives me 0 0.9, my n of 100 that were sampled, and then solving for the top and solving for the bottom. Remember, up the top is my sampling error, and down below is our standard error. So we'll get negative 1.33. It's really important that you practice this on your calculator. Make sure that you get what I get, otherwise you might be having issues with your order of operations or the way you're entering it into your calculator. So now we want to compare our test statistic to our critical value. Where does the negative 1.33 fall in our distribution? So if I have to draw it, so I'd put it around here. So we can see it's to the right of our critical value or our cutoff point. So what does this mean? Because our z test statistic of negative 1.33 is not less than our critical value of negative 1.645, we do not reject the null, right? Over here is the do not reject region. We only reject when it's in the tail. In other words, we're going to circle our null hypothesis because we do not reject it. That means this is the accepted statement. But what does that mean for Amazon? Because we did not reject the null, that means I'm keeping the null and we're going to ignore the alternative hypothesis. What does this mean for Amazon and what can we conclude? So this is saying that the population proportion of Amazon customers that are dissatisfied is greater or equal to 0 0.10. That means Amazon's claim of having less than 0 0.10 customers is not true. And that's a problem. We have more dissatisfied customers than we think. And so if we were Jeff Bezos, what could we do? Perhaps we need to train our employees for better customer service or change our return policy or change something about the business to make things better, make our customers less dissatisfied. So let's go ahead and do problem 30 on our worksheet. It's also our homework problem. Suppose a recent random sample of employees nationwide that have a 401k retirement plan found that 18% of them borrowed against it in the last year. A random sample of 100 employees from a local company who have a 401k retirement plan found that 14 had borrowed from their plan. Based on the sample results, is it possible to conclude at the alpha level of 0.025 level of significance 
that the local company had a lower proportion of borrowers from its retirement plan than the 18% reported nationwide. So here we want to make sure we understand all the pieces. We need to find the population proportion. So our context clue here is the word nationwide. So we can tell that this is our population proportion. Also, in our question here, we are asking to compare the proportion of borrowers from our local company versus the proportion of borrowers nationwide. So we want to identify, is this a lower, upper, or two-tailed test? So we want to look for any directional language. And so looking through, we can see that there's the word lower. That means this is a less than or lower tailed test. So it's a one tailed test. So setting up our null and alternative hypotheses, we'll write that the population proportion is less than 0 0.18. That's what we're going to be testing for. And the null hypothesis is just the opposite of that. So the population proportion is greater than or equal to 0 0.18. To find the sample proportion, we have to take our sample data, and that found that 14 people out of 100 sampled had borrowed against their 401k plans. So taking 14 divided by 100 gives us a sample proportion of 0 0.14. Please remember that proportions must be in decimal format. Using whole numbers means nothing. We'll need to identify our alpha or level of significance at 0 0.025, and again as a reminder, Looking at our alternative, we can see that this is a lower tail test because the less than statement. So for our decision rule, we will reject the null if the calculated value of the test statistic Z is less than the critical value. Less than because our alternative hypothesis also says less than. And to find the critical value, we can use Excel or Appendix F. We'll just use Excel. So for a lower tail test, we'll type in equals norm dot s dot inv parentheses 0 0.025 close out and hit enter and we get negative 1.96 for our critical value z next we have to calculate the value of the z test statistic in part b by plugging in our sample proportion minus our population proportion divided by our standard error so plugging in our variables there's my sample proportion Here's my population proportion. And for our standard error, we plug in the lowercase p, or the population proportion, times 1 minus p divided by 100. So simplifying my sampling error, I get negative 0.04 in the top. And solving for my standard error, I get 0.0384 in the bottom. I always recommend doing them in components so that you avoid errors with the order of operations. And double check with your calculator to make sure you get the same answers I do. Then dividing these two numbers, our Z test statistic is negative 1.04. So if we use the critical value approach for our conclusion, since our test statistic in part B of negative 1.04 is not less than our critical Z value of negative 1.96. So if we imagine it and we draw it in the distribution, where does our test statistic fall? Is it in the rejection region or is it over in the do not reject region? And as you can see, because it's not less than our cutoff point, we do not reject the null and can conclude that the proportion of employees who borrow from their 401k plan is not less than the national average. For part D, let's go ahead and use the p-value approach. So taking our information, we're going to use equals norm.s.dist, enter the z test statistic you got in part b of negative 1.04 comma true. So for our lower tail test, equals norm.s.dist parentheses negative 1.04 comma true, close parentheses, hit enter, we get 0 0.1492. And so if we look at our distribution, our p-value, or the area for based on our test statistic is 0 0.1492, and we now have to compare it to our alpha value. So because the p-value of 0 0.1492 is not less than the alpha of 0 0.025, we do not reject the null and conclude that the proportion of employees who borrowed from their 401k plan is not less than the national average. So again, you can see that the results of the p-value approach and the critical value approach will be the same. If they are not the same, then you know you've made an error somewhere in your interpretation. Note that in our Excel file, I do remind you that for hypothesis testing of the proportions, you only use the formulas on the left for z values.
we do not touch t values when it comes to population proportions. There's only one process for hypothesis testing of the proportions, and it's only related to z values. So if you look at your worksheet, I also have the, another homework problem set up for you. So you can practice it before you try it uh, on the homework, or you can just use it as a step-by-step -step guideline on how to get through it. But you'll just use the numbers on your homework problem. If you have questions, just let me know.